You are listening to Total Lacrosse with Johnny Vegas on the Lacrosse Broadcast Network. Without further ado, here's your host, Johnny Vegas. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Total Lacrosse with yours truly, Johnny Vegas. My guest today will be calling in shortly, and he is the one and only Casey Powell. Right now, we will take a quick commercial break to thank all of our sponsors. Easton Lacrosse is dedicated to the performance, protection, innovation, and passion, the same principles that drive the other Easton Bell brands. We are honored to bring the best of innovation and tradition, along with today's leading technology, to America's fastest growing field sport. EastonLacrosse.com Rocket Pocket, four words in no particular order. Accuracy, dependability, consistency, durability. These are the pocket-making concepts that we have always lived by and strived for. Go to rock-itpocket.com after the show and order your custom Rocket Pocket. Sportscript.com, the ultimate amateur sports social network. Record and manage your own sports career. It's free. Track your own statistics, compare your performance against anyone, Share your season schedules and the game results with friends and family. Use the tools of SportsScript to help improve your game. Go to www.sportscript.com now. This segment is brought to you by Wicked Fix Sports. Wicked Fix is changing the way we look at the game with killer apparel and custom uniform design. Wicked Fix Sports. Look better. Play better. It's science. Visit them today at wickedfixsports.com and get your team uniforms custom designed with their no-obligation free quote. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. Without further ado, Casey Powell, you're live. How you doing? Hey, thanks for uh, joining us on the show today. Hey, thanks a lot. Great to be on the show. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, all of our uh, our fans, listeners here uh, on uh, Total Lacrosse with Johnny Vegas and the Lacrosse Broadcast Network are very excited uh, that you're uh, on the show. And uh, without further ado, I just want to... Uh, about how you first started playing lacrosse first. Like, uh, what was, uh, then when was your initial experience uh, playing lacrosse? Well, I had never heard of lacrosse, and uh, although I'm from northern New York, where uh, lacrosse now is pretty pretty popular up there, it wasn't there wasn't a lot around. The closest uh, lacrosse to me was about 20 miles away, and uh, I was in fifth grade. My gym teacher brought in a lacrosse stick the first time I ever saw one, and um, we we were kind of intrigued by it, my brothers and I, and a couple weeks later, my dad, after talking about it relentlessly at the dinner table, my showed up, sold one of his shotguns, and uh, bought us three lacrosse sticks, and uh, we started playing. We lived right next to the elementary school that we went to and started playing wall ball, and uh, our gym teacher, Kirk Penicuatro, who uh, brought in the lacrosse stick, uh saw that we were really interested and more kids in the neighborhood showed up with sticks and then he started an intramural program and uh, the rest is history. Yeah, it's, it's incredible and uh, I just want to uh, then go on to, uh, uh, you uh, played at, you graduated from Carthage Senior High School with an all-time national record of 553 points and then you signed with Division One Powerhouse Syracuse University. How was uh, that experience uh, and uh, I mean, having that that record uh, at uh, at your high school. I mean, that was that must have been pretty awesome. Well, it's funny. I I you know I knew I did pretty well, but I was kind of just doing my thing, and I didn't realize I had a record until about four years later. Um, so I okay. I didn't. It wasn't like something I was uh, shooting for or something I attempted to to break or even knew about. So I would just kind of uh, I played you know. And uh, played four years and put up a lot of a lot of points. And uh, I found out later, uh, after I was, I think uh, my senior year at Syracuse, that I was the all-time leading scorer. And and uh, so that was that was pretty cool. But um, I had a great high school career. I got to play with my brother, and um, it was fun to be a part of a program that kind of built from the bottom. That gym teacher, Benacuatro, became my high school coach, and uh, we would travel down to Syracuse and were inspired by the the Gate Brother era Syracuse teams, which were very exciting and creative and uh, innovative, and we'd uh, watch their games and we'd take some of their skills and uh, their their 
plays that we would uh, vividly remember. We'd take them to our backyard and work on them over and over again. And literally, I'd pretend I was Gary, and Ryan would pretend that he was Paul, and uh, we we made Mike be the goalie most of the time. But um, <laughs> yeah, then I went on to Syracuse, and obviously had the opportunity to play for a uh, uh, Royce Jr. Hall of Famer, and I think he's one of the greatest guys in the in the world. He's my hero, and I uh, was very fortunate to have that opportunity, and obviously being a part of uh, Syracuse University, the most national championships of any other school, is, um, was a great great place to be. I had a chance to win one and then uh, be able to uh, watch my brothers uh, win a couple as well. So it's uh, it was great to be able to, to uh, basically live my dream. I came to go into Syracuse after watching them, and then I, I went and did my thing, and uh, it was just uh uh, a great experience and something I'll cherish forever. Yeah, and uh, also, uh, yeah, after that experience, uh, you also uh, played for uh, USA in uh, the 2006 uh, World uh, Lacrosse Championship. Uh, you were uh, the, uh, one of the captains for uh, the U.S. national team. Um, how was that playing on the, inter- uh, the international level? And uh, what do you uh, what do you see uh, that going forward in the future? Do you think? Uh, that uh, it's going to keep uh, growing and the, uh, other countries are going to keep up in their game? Yeah, I played on the 98 U.S. team. I was slightly hurt and uh, had a chance to play in that game. It was 13-12, uh, one of the, they call it the greatest game ever in Baltimore at Johns Hopkins Field. And um, then I played 2006 with my brothers. And um, it was uh, obviously, it's always great to be a part of Team USA and certainly an honor and another uh, another uh, thing that I strive for once I knew more about the international play. But um, Canada obviously is uh, right up there in, in level with the United States and the other countries are slowly catching up. But that's kind of my goal for the next couple of years is to um, help spread the game across the across the world, and uh, I had the opportunity to play uh, box lacrosse in Prague, Czech Republic, and um, they're really, you know, fond of the game, and it's, it's great to see. I've, I've played in Hawaii with some Japanese players, and, um, you know, whether no matter what country you're from, if you're a lacrosse player, you're a lacrosse player, and it's a great culture to be a part of, and uh, it's no surprise with all, with the relationships and the experience and the uh, the style and creativity of lacrosse that, uh, that it's spreading uh, uh, like wildfire. So I'm excited about the future of uh, international lacrosse. Yeah, I just want to let you know, uh, next uh, summer I'm going to go to Israel to try out for the Israel national team. And uh, they, uh, their, their uh, goal is to have half of the roster uh, Israel-born players and half Jewish players. So uh, I'm Jewish, and uh, that's something to get on. Uh, that's something to try out. Uh, it's going to be a great experience. Uh, my goal is to play in the World Games in 2014, which will be in Denver. That's great. Vegas doesn't sound Jewish, but... I know, right? Well, that's not my... Uh, <laughs> My birth name is John Namer, uh, and uh, I got this nickname, Johnny Vegas, uh, a few years ago, and it's kind of turned into uh, this, uh, this whole thing. Uh, we're kind of branding it, and uh, everybody uh, that uh, that I know knows me by Johnny Vegas, and, and a lot of people know me by my birth name, too, but the Johnny Vegas thing is kind of taken over. <laughs> No, no, I love it, and I've I've heard uh, a lot about Israel lacrosse. They, they've uh, they're really coming on strong and making a good push, and that's uh, certainly good to see. And and I know the lacrosse community is welcoming you know newcomers who, uh, and uh, new countries that that want to play. So I think it's exciting, and there's a lot of momentum behind it. And good luck to you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, also, yeah, I want to talk about uh, uh, you're uh, playing in the MLL uh, for the Hamilton Nationals, right? Yeah, I um, I uh, started with the league back in 2000, the summer showcase, and I you know, a lot of seasons in Major League Lacrosse, and I had a great experience, and it was fun to be a part of growing a league and uh, helping spread lacrosse, and I think, um, you know, having the opportunity to play all over the country and play against the best players in the world has been an awesome experience, and, um, you know, I think the future is bright for professional lacrosse. It has a long way to go, but I think it's going to be uh, fantastic, and I hope when I'm... I'm old and gray and, um, you know, completely retired. I hope that uh, lacrosse continues to grow and expand, and um, I don't see any reason why it won't. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, uh, the lacrosse world uh, is kind of cool. How it, uh, I mean, it's, it's a big world, but it's also a small world in the sense that, uh, um, I mean, you can go to a tournament and see, uh, uh, you know, guys like uh, you playing there and stuff and playing against, uh, uh, you know, top-level 
uh, players that uh, played uh, professionally and played professionally, and it's just kind of cool uh, how it's like six degrees of separation, kind of, you, uh, you know this guy, and then that's how you uh, get connected with, uh, you know, a certain player, and it's, it's just a cool uh, kind of world to, to uh, be playing in, uh, to be able to, uh, to talk and connect with uh, players like you and, uh, and uh, a ton of other players in the professional scene. Absolutely. Well said. It is. It is. Gro- it is growing and it's changing. But you're right. It's still the small, uh, small culture, and you know we're kind of uh, all together. Um, I'm I'm down at St. Andrews in Boca Raton as a director of lacrosse. At a, you know it's a great school here, and we have a um, foreign foreign student from China who's just getting into lacrosse. And I brought him to it. I brought him to a lacrosse tournament with me. His first experience, and it was a youth tournament. And I was walking around and. A lot of people were coming up to me, hey, Casey, you know, this and that. And uh, at the end of it, uh, he goes, Coach Powell, you make lacrosse make you lots of friends. And, that, and it, you know, it was kind of cool that he saw that, you know, lacrosse is a, uh, it's all about the experience and relationships and being social. And, um, you know, it's something that I kind of take for granted sometimes. But, he, you know, he kind of uh, reinstituted in my head that, you know, that's something that's very important with the game and something that's, uh, Probably the the best thing that's happened uh, because of lacrosse. All the people I've met and all the places I went. Yeah, yeah, definitely well said. And uh, I just want to uh, plug your uh, your website uh, real quick, uh, kcpowellacrosse.com. Uh, you got uh, some uh, teams and stuff uh, that you run uh, through that website. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that website? Yeah, I run a lacrosse educational business, uh, something I've been doing since I got out of college in 98, and um, I've been teaching lacrosse all around the world, and it's something I, I really love to do. I love to um, uh, teach kids what I've learned uh, from all the different coaches I've had and all the different uh, players that I've played with. I've tried to take a little bit from everybody and institute it into my own program, and that's what Casey Powell Lacrosse is. It's uh, my, my experience and relationships and uh, knowledge of the game, and it, it's expressed uh, in, in camp and clinic. I run a club team, 22. I also have a spring break program at Disney Wide World of Sports, and um, I keep, you know, keep real busy. And then in my, you know, my full-time job is being director of us at St. Andrews, so. Yeah, and it's great. And uh, uh, also, uh, um, are you uh, planning on a, uh, in uh, Hawaii next year. I went this year for the first time. It was uh, such an incredible tournament. I was uh, captain of Team Aloha. Oh, it's the best, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you gotta you gotta kind of pinch yourself. It feels like you're in a dream, a, a lack, big lax dream. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just like uh, the beach right there. You know, if I surfed, it would be cool to go surfing. But I, uh, you know, I just kind of. Uh, you know, hung out at the beach, uh, you know, went swimming and then played lacrosse and got to uh, meet and play against Gary Gate, Paul Rabel, Kyle Hartzell, you know, Whisker God, and, and it was just such a great experience. And Gary Gate was actually on my show uh, last month. Awesome, awesome. Yep, he's 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 my hero. I was just in Rochester. I'm playing for the indoor for the Nighthawks, and uh, Gary okay. and Paul were at the ring ceremony banquet, and uh, I got a chance to see them uh, on Saturday night. So it's pretty. I always get a little giddy because I used to pretend I was right. them. So it was. Uh, it was. They're 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 they've been an unbelievable players, and they're great ambassadors. And uh, I look up to them so much on and off the field. Um, I can't say enough about those two guys, what they've done for lacrosse. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, also I want to talk about uh, your youngest brother, Mason. Uh, and he's playing up at uh, what, what uh, college did he uh, decide to go to? Yeah, he's at Cortland State, which is a Division Three powerhouse in uh, upstate New York. Plays for Coach Steve Bevel. Uh, they lost Cortland lost last year to Salisbury in the national championship, but they're uh, a top uh, top team in Division Three, and and um, I think he's excited to uh, begin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen. Uh, uh, some stuff, uh, you know, uh, about like his uh, lacrosse career so far in high school, and, uh, and uh, everything I've heard is uh, is great. And uh, uh, I mean, it seems like he's got uh, a dedication uh, and passion for the sport, uh, just like uh, his older brothers. Yeah, he, you know, he didn't grow up in the backyard like we did, uh, competing against each other. He was, I was 18 when he was born, so uh, he kind of, I'm more like his uncle than his brother uh, in terms of uh, the age difference, but. Um, 
Yeah, he's he's a good kid, and I'm, I'm certainly excited to uh, support him in anything he chooses to do in the future. And he's uh, he won a state champion. Chip uh, as a lacrosse player and as a hockey player, and um, you know he's a good athlete, and um, I'm excited to uh, support him uh, moving forward. Nice, nice. Uh, and also uh, speaking of hockey, uh, uh, just a question. I don't know if uh, I didn't put uh, this up or anything, but uh, did uh, you uh, and uh, your other brothers besides Mason play hockey also? No, um, we first of all I couldn't skate. Um, but our school didn't have it, and my parents moved closer to Syracuse um, to a place called Casanova in New York, and they have a big big hockey program, so my brother was the only one that played hockey. Um, I kind of wish our school would have had it, because I think I would have had a better chance of uh, uh, making it to the NHL and actually making some money by playing a professional sport. So it would have been uh, better financially, but uh, lacrosse has worked out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully uh, the NHL uh, lockout... Uh and just, uh, I know a lot of uh, the Kings fans here in uh, Los Angeles are kind of, you know, getting uh, a little uh, upset that uh, the season hasn't started. Yeah, NHL. absolutely. Uh, yeah, with the, with the lockout, we're hoping, you know, if people are, uh, choose the National Lacrosse League um, as an option. It's uh, it's an affordable and uh, action-packed, uh, you know, sport. And hopefully uh, some of those hockey fans that like uh, the like the uh, high scoring up and down and the physicalness of hockey will have an opportunity to come uh, support lacrosse. Yeah. Uh, I play box lacrosse out here in uh, Los Angeles just in like uh, uh, kind of like uh, post-collegiate uh, leagues and uh, my team total lacrosse we uh, we uh, took on the Chiefs uh, which are uh, a team that's played together for many years and uh, I mean, box lacrosse is, uh, it, it's such an incredible uh, game that's it's a uh, you, I mean, you really get such a work at it. I mean, I, I've never uh, uh, sweated more than I have in box lacrosse, and, and it's just a great sport, very physical. It is. It's so much fun. And, you know, I, I love playing it more than I like field, and people kind of the field people kind of frown upon it. And it's like, you know, to me the analogy is yeah, I like chocolate and vanilla ice cream. I prefer vanilla if I had the choice, and that's kind of how I am with uh, with lacrosse. I prefer indoor lacrosse. I, I, I just love the action and uh, the intensity of it, and it's a little bit more difficult and a little bit more challenging to play than it is for me to, to play field. So, yeah, I really like the indoor game. I think um, anybody that, that's played it enjoys it, and I think uh, in terms of the, the greatest players to ever play the game, they all have a little bit of a uh, box lacrosse background, so it, it helps you uh, in a lot of different ways, and I think the, um, to become a better lacrosse player, um, uh, playing box lacrosse and as much as possible is uh, something that you should do. Yeah, I, I agree totally. It's a, it's a great, uh, uh, I mean, it, it'll definitely uh, improve your skill with uh, the field of the crowds, and uh, it's very uh, well put. And uh, also, uh, I want to talk about uh, Easton across. So uh, you're, uh, you're signed by Easton. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's been a great company to be a part of. Um, Doug Appleton and the Kim brothers, um, three diehard lacrosse fans who, um, you know, have went, been on this uh, unbelievable journey to, um, you know, promote the game and uh, grow the game uh, properly and, you know, pay respect and, and honor the players that have played it and then develop some fantastic equipment. And um, uh, it's been a great uh, move for me. I feel revitalized in terms of uh, working with a, uh, uh, an outfit like Easton, um, they've done things the right way in other sports, and they're continuing to do things right in in lacrosse. So I'm I'm proud to represent them, and I'm excited about the future of Easton. And uh, their products uh, are are great. I I love their their handles and their latest heads that have come out have um, really stepped it up, and um, just all around they're making improvements. And it's nice to uh, give them feedback and to see um, the designers at Easton actually utilize our thoughts. And it's uh, it's fun to be a part of and and to have a piece of it and and uh, I'm I'm happy to be a part of Easton Lacrosse. Yeah, and uh, Easton uh, is also a sponsor for uh, the Lacrosse Broadcast Network. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you heard the commercial in the beginning of the show, uh, but I mean it's great to have them uh, support uh, the show and the network. And you know they sent gear over, and so in return uh, we play commercials. So. Yes, I did. I did hear the commercial. It was good. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, um, uh, also LSM Pro, uh, your brother Mikey is playing in that, and uh, he's doing a phenomenal job. And, uh, I've gotten a chance uh, 
uh, last year I went to Elks and Pro Vegas and they had an open tryout. And I got to try out for uh, Elks and Pro. And uh, the way the tryout worked was they had uh, uh, the pros uh, for Elks and Pro uh, kind of practice. That was like their practice the night before. So they, they teamed us up with uh, the pros and we, uh, we played against UNLV. So, I mean, just having like, I took a face off, Mikey Powell on the wing and Brett Peters long full midi uh, on the other way. It was just kind of crazy experience. Oh, that's awesome. That's, I love hearing that stuff. Speaking yeah. of uh, speaking of Brett Hughes, I'm I'm uh, he's part of Lacrosse the Nation, and I'm uh, I'm heading down to Nicaragua uh, next week with him to uh, bring not bring lacrosse but continue to to support lacrosse in Nicaragua to this village that uh, actually lives in a dump. And if you go to lacrossethenation.org, there's a great video on there. So I'm excited to uh, to go and support it and. Uh, uh, my goal in two, you know the end of this year and moving forward in 2013 is to give back to the game as much as possible, and I'm excited to go to uh, leave the country and um, and uh, use lacrosse as a way to lift spirits in, in uh, you know poverty stricken areas. So I'm, I'm excited for that opportunity. Yeah, that's great that you guys are doing that, and uh, I mean I know that uh, uh, the people there will uh, definitely appreciate it, and uh, um, you guys are doing a great job, and uh, keep up the good work with that. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, yeah, also I uh, just want to uh, talk about uh, uh, you, uh, you also played uh, for Anaheim Storm when they were when they were around. Uh, and uh, uh, how was your experience uh, in LA uh, when you played for them? Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a condo in Huntington Beach, and um, I, I love going out there. I thought, you know, I think lacrosse will eventually. Uh, um, grow roots out there. It's obviously growing huge at the youth and high school level and um there's been a couple of tries at the pro and I think, you know, moving forward it'll it'll be back. But it was fun to go out there and present the game to a new fan base and um, you know, obviously being in a beautiful area is uh is a win win. Yeah, definitely. And uh also I'm uh, I'm good friends with uh your friend Sean Lindsay. Uh, I coach with him for uh, his company Los Angeles Mavericks. So uh, he he's a great player, and uh, I know he's uh, uh he works with uh, Easton the Cross Theory, and you know, he's always uh, showcasing the new stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's um he's one of the he's one of the best ones out there in terms of uh you know his, his overall attitude and uh, as a as a player he's just he's been great. Um, he was a great teammate to my brother, and um, I've had the opportunity to hang out with him quite a bit. He's great for the game of lacrosse, and, and uh, the West Coast is lucky to have him. Yeah, and uh, also uh, I have a, um, a fan uh, question uh, from uh, Josh Chewy, Acut, and uh, he uh, he has like a little fun question that I figured I'd ask you. So he said, if you were uh, to suit up in goal, and uh, let's say you were playing against uh, either Mikey or Ryan, they were coming out coming uh, shooting on you, what would uh, you do? Would you uh, would you try to uh, make a save? Would you come out at them? What would uh, just uh, hear a little. Uh, Fun answer here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Well, uh, I guess uh, against those two guys, I would probably just grab the top of the goal and pull it to the to the ground. Uh, <laughs> it, it might be illegal, but they wouldn't score, and uh, yeah. I think I'd be happy with that result. I think it'd be a good older brother maneuver. So I'd probably just yeah, pull the definitely. goal down, face down, and uh, you know, call it a day. They wouldn't <laughs> score, so hopefully that counts. Yeah, yeah, and uh, also your brother Ryan is uh, uh, he's got a company Rhino Lacrosse, and uh, he's doing a great job of uh, having the pleasure to meet him too, and uh, uh, he's doing a phenomenal job growing the game as well. So uh, yeah, the whole yeah, he's doing, he's, yeah, Ryan's doing a great job, and actually uh, today we're launching uh, the Sar- Saratoga Springs Lacrosse Festival, which will be in uh, July fifth, sixth, and seventh. In Saratoga Springs, New York, it's on the polo fields of this beautiful uh, town in the uh, Adirondacks, and uh, we're excited to uh, start a youth and and uh, high school and college tournament. So uh, uh, we're pumped about that, and we're going to do a lot of fun stuff around it to make it a really good uh, overall experience. And I, I think in a in a year or two, we'll be one of the top tournaments. So we're really excited to uh, to uh, bring this to uh, lacrosse. Yeah. Uh you know, I had a great time talking with you, and uh, I'm sure uh, our paths will cross in the future where we'll actually uh, 
get to meet in person, maybe at a tournament or something. Uh, but I just want to say uh, on behalf of uh, the show and also the Lacrosse Broadcast Network and LacrosseSocialMedia.com, uh, we thank you for uh, being on the show. And uh, uh, do you have any uh, advice to the young uh, lacrosse players uh, out there that are trying to get better at the sport? Well, I think uh, the most important thing is keep the stick in your hand, um, be positive all times, and always in- pick up the tempo when uh, you try to outwork the competition. And it's, uh, that's worked for me and my brothers, and um, we've kind of uh, stuck with the basics and uh, just try to get better and faster and uh, increase the, uh, the amount of reps and the intensity of uh, everything you do out there. So, And then uh, if that doesn't work, maybe coming to my holiday uh, training club in Florida and you can see that on my website. <laughs> All right, yeah, so uh, www.caseypowellacrosse.com. And uh, do you have a Twitter or uh, um, anything you want to uh, plug? I do, and uh, it's Casey Powell 22 Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much, Casey, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, and good luck with everything. Good job. Thanks. All right, everybody. I uh, just want to say uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, have a great day, everybody. Uh, and remember, grow your game, all right? Uh, you want to grow the game, but also grow your game. Get better, you know, work hard and get better at the sport. And uh, remember to grow the game, all right? You guys got to play, you got to coach, you got to get out there, do what you got to do, all right? Uh, right now I'm signing off, and I'll see you next week.